All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get on into it. Game three here, the Han Tour Gold League Cycle 1 Winner's Bracket Grand Finals are going on, and it all comes down to this. The game is tied up. The series is tied up one-to-one. -one. FYKU taking on duel. Who is going to press out here and make it on into the Grand Finals? And who's going to have to drop into the Loser's Bracket Finals to play tomorrow? It all comes down to this. FYKU, of course, just had a dominant, dominant showing in the last game, showing us how Monkey King is played. And it was pretty damned impressive. We'll see if they happen this time as well. Let's get right on into it, guys. Blind Band's coming out. We do have Magnus and Ophelia. Ophelia in Keeper of the Force. Ophelia has been Blind Band by both teams. All three games of the series. Nobody wants to see Ophelia. She is, of course, extremely strong hero. Magnus makes his way into the blind band list for the first time. And Keeper of the Forest joins him there for the third time. As FYKU certainly does not want that hero going in. Ophelia and Keeper of the Forest. The same blind bands for all three games, guys. But let's get right back into the locks now. First lock comes out. And it is, in fact, a Luna. Chandra falls very quickly from... Frozen Goat over there for Duel, as well as Bubbles. Into Ghost, er, Ghost Rider. Man, that wouldn't that be badass? As long as he wasn't played by Nicolas Cage, I'd be okay with it. But uh, we do have Plague Rider and Glacius coming out as the final locks for Shizor. And the last one overall, Frozen Goat picks Tempest to make it into the lock pool. And with that... You have a very strong lock pool of a few suicides in the form of Plague Grider as well as Bubbles. Even Tundra could be considered that as well as Tempest. Jungle or Suicide, two strong supports as well. We'll see which ones do make it into the picking pool relatively soon here. Going into the bands, maybe something that you'd expect. Pebbles and Monkey King both banned immediately. Uh, Pebbles didn't have the best of games last time, but FYKU chooses to ban him anyway. A little bit afraid of how Casualist did uh, maybe recover on that Pebbles. He certainly did have a recover. But uh, Monkey King not going to be given to Pew this time. Peewee, whatever you want to call him. As he just looked ridiculously dominant in that last game. Cookies, you better look out. Somebody's coming for your throne. I think I saw him in chat a little bit earlier even saying that Peewee was a better Monkey King. But... Looking good for sure. Draconis and Warbeast, as well as Jeraziah Fade, do round out the bans here. So Draconis, FYKU, bans out uh, the last hero that was used here by Duel. But they do give him one of their other heroes that they're just happy with. So we'll see. Warbeast, not going to see his jungling, ganking, pushing late game potential. None of that this time. And of course, Jeraziah Fade, two extremely strong heroes, do join the rest of the uh, heroes in the dumpster is they're not going to make it in this time. They're just too dirty to make it. And let's go into the picking phase. First pick out of FYKU is Dark Lady. So interesting, interesting. We saw in the first game that Duel picked up Dark Lady. The second game she was, in fact, banned. Duel, being uh, booking, was able to play the Dark Lady and get up to about 700 gold per minute on her so we'll see if fyku can replicate that maybe emulate their inner slicks or Nox or whoever your favorite dark lady player is but of course an extremely strong ganking or excuse me uh carry hero on the other side duel chooses to start off with a mid lane marax is going to play the point stunner as well as engineer going to be the support in that one and a strong one it is uh one of these lanes that doesn't have a whole lot of reach it's kind of hard for them to set it up but if they get assistance from anything, maybe by way of a parasite, something like that, then they can certainly get some strong, strong initiation. And once they land one spell, they should be able to combo it out onto most heroes and finish them off. Back to the other side, FYKU goes with actually a Nymphora and a Hammerstorm. So Hammerstorm makes it in. A hero that we don't see too, too often, but I, I do believe I recall FYKU playing... Uh, Hammerstorm uh, a few days ago when I was watching them and playing him somewhat as a carry, a semi-carry type hero, but he is versatile. Like the Aluna hero, 
that can be played as a hard support. She can be played as a semi-carry ganker. She can be played as a hard carry. She fulfills a lot of roles. Hammerstorm can as well. Playing a secondary support, he can play a strength initiator, he can play a ganker roamer, or he can play a carry. So it's really all about the way that you want to build that hero. And depending on where they stick him, that's going to determine his role in this team lineup. Shouldn't be playing too hard of a carry as Dark Lady is already on the team. She's going to soak up the majority of the farm. Not, we'll have to see. Silhouette's the final standard pick for Duel. That's going to be their carry as they did pick... Uh, <laughs> the carries have swapped this time. FYKU had Silhouette in Game 1 and Duel had Dark Lady. But we're going to see this battle once again. Considered two of the strongest hard carries in the game. The strongest melee versus the strongest ranged. We'll see which one prevails this time. Dark Lady did in Game 1. Silhouette has in the past. We'll see if Duel can make it happen. First lock pick out of uh, FYKU is going to be Tempest. So, of course, they like having that very strong jungler, Pinky Curdy, in the first game, I believe, was the first game, yeah, first game with Tempest, was able to get that very strong portal key, shrunken head combination with a mana ring and boots by about 25 minutes into the game, somewhere around there, and of course, that's great to have, they weren't able to capitalize it on it, though, as Dark Lady just got much too fat, but now that they have the Dark Lady on their hands, well... Could be a whole nother story. We'll see if Pinky Curdy chooses to go for that same farm intensive route. But we'll see. On the other side, finishing it out for Duel is actually going to be Aluna Bubbles. So uh, Bip has made his way into the game. I believe replacing Kaya, Kuya, whatever. Um, <laughs> and so it looks like Bip will be playing the Bubbles this time. Interesting, interesting. So the Suicide changing roles. And now, Aluna going to join the ranks as well. So, Duel for the third time in a row going to play that double support type lineup. Getting the Engineer as well as the Aluna. With the Silhouette Hard Carry and the Ganking Team Engineer, Varaxis. They look like I have a pretty strong lineup, but finishing it up for the other side is a Plague Rider. Actually not going to be Shizzer playing it this time though. So, it could be played in a little bit different of a capacity. Wouldn't be surprised to see that it goes to the Suicide player who is Vian Sensation right now. He was playing the Wild Soul last time, and it looks like he might play that Suicide Plague Rider this time. Teaming up with that, I would expect Tempest to be making his way to the jungle. Dark Lady to probably solo bottom, going to be up against that Bubbles, and Hammerstorm Nymphora in the middle lane. So, interesting to note with Hammerstorm Nymphora, they have a lot of stun potential. Not a huge amount of damage potential, though. They don't have anything that pushes you out of the way and gets you super out of position. They just lock you down for a really long time. That Hammerstorm stun is two seconds flat. It doesn't increase over time. Uh, the only thing that does is, in fact, the damage associated with it. Mana cost stays the same. Uh, I don't know if the cooldown actually changes at all. But more importantly, the strength, or the duration doesn't get any better. But most people choose to level it up anyway because the rest of his uh, abilities aren't exactly stellar. Of course, getting one point in Galvanize, and some people choose to go with some mighty uh, swing abilities to get that cleave on. Lends to a little bit of farming as well as pushing ability. Just a little bit stronger. But we'll see what uh, our Shizar is actually going to do as he's playing that one. He played Devo the first time and Plague Rider the second time. So Shizor, showing that he's a uh, man of many talents. Going to team up with Cores once again in the middle lane this time. And we'll see if they're going to be able to contend with this Engineer and Miraxis. I, I actually have to give the lane advantage to Miraxis Engineer. Simply because they, they have damage to back up the uh, stun potential. The keg pushes someone out of the way. It's going to be harder for them. Like I said, it, it's not a point and click like this Hammerstorm is over here. They've got great stuns, but if they're able to land the combination, and more importantly, if the other team initiates on them, they should be able to take good counter initiation. So a lot of it for the Legion team is just going to be about trying to outfarm them and not get killed. Because I think Hammerstorm should be able to outfarm them, but the kill potential is definitely there for the Hellborn team. In the bottom lane, Silhouette is actually going to go up against Dark Lady uh, with the Aluna babysitting. So interesting. Duel showing that they really don't like running a jungler. 
Uh, they haven't had one in all three of these games. Instead, going with that double support lane and uh, putting a farmer in one lane in the middle with the support, and then putting a carry in another lane with the support. So interesting, interesting. Silhouette should have a very good time down here against the solo dark lady, and I like what they've done here. The bubbles, of course, will not do nearly as well against the plague rider as they would have if they had put the silhouette up there. Uh, but the silhouette's going to do much better in the bottom lane than the bubbles would have. So I, I like this potential. They're not only restricting the farm of the Dark Lady in this bottom lane, but they're also making sure that uh, the bubbles will be able to get decent farm up in top lane. Not great farm, but decent farm. So I like it quite a bit. The deny coming in from... Uh, the deny back coming in from silhouette and Aluna affording them great lane position right now. And they're looking good in that bottom lane. I really do think that uh, Duel completely out uh, lined up or out laned their opponents. Not necessarily out drafted. I think that uh, FYKU hacks a great draft, but certainly a great lane situation here as Dark Lady's not going to be able to get very much farm. Uh, actually, a nice arcane shield there coming up out of Maraxis, able to deflect the Hammerstorm stun. And that's another thing here in the middle lane. I, I believe that Engineer Maraxis was the first pick, one and two, coming out of the Hellboard team. In fact, they were, followed up by uh, Nymphora Hammerstorm. You have to realize, though, with that Maraxis, he's able to deflect those hammer throws pretty effectively. Engineer, though, he is not as Tempest is invis with level 2 Glacial Blasts. Yes, so there will be two stuns. If this Engineer gets out of position, they could very, very easily take out this Engineer and bring home the Bloodlust kill. Oh, Engineer in some trouble as the Glacial Blast as well as the Hammerstorm stun comes out. That's what I'm talking about. They don't have a lot of follow-up potential. It, they can lock them down for a decent amount of time, and there they stack the stuns pretty heavily, to be honest. Um, but they just don't have much damage. The Hammerstorm has to close the distance in order to uh, do a lot of damage to the opponent just with those auto attacks, which he will hit very hard once he starts pouring points into the stats. But that forces him into a pretty poor position and can easily be turned around on for a counter kill. So I, I really do like the lane setup here for Duel quite a bit more. Hammerstorm and Nymphora, of course, they're holding their own here. Hammerstorm currently at 12 and 2, whereas Maraxis, who drops the stomp right there, trying to put on a little bit of pressure to that Hammerstorm, and, and they were just a little bit too close. As they're going to try to turn it around, perhaps, with the Hammerstorm stun coming in and the Glacial Blast, the auto attacks as well, but... No, not enough to follow it up. Neither, really, neither team in the middle lane really has a whole lot going on. Um, <laughs> they're not quite able to, to finish off the kills that they are, in fact, trying to start here. I think Hammerstorm and if they had caught uh, Hammerstorm in the middle of the river rather than up the ramp, they might have been able to finish off the kill. But Tempest was also there, so that's another reason why they had to back off pretty soon. And the keg, or the excuse me, the turret didn't uh, have the best positioning. So, in terms of CS, Marax is 17-2 as opposed to the 16-7 for Hammerstorm, so pretty much equal here. Um, Tom playing Bubbles taking a little bit of pressure from the Plague Rider, who is, of course, higher level. Plague Rider does have an advantage, even though he's the uh, short, or, excuse me, the long lane in this situation, just because of that deny ability and the consistent nuke damage coming out of his uh, Contagion. Bottom lane, Dark Lady trying to do her best Currently at 13 and 1, able to get some last hits uh, simply as a result of that taint soul. Bubbles is now in a little bit of trouble. The trees do respawn and uh, give him enough fog to actually get out of there as a second contagion nuke. Not going to come out just yet. Yeah, so Dark Lady, he, she's doing a good job utilizing that taint soul to get last hits as well as her hatchet. She's up to 16 CS, so. Doing a lot better than I really would have expected, to be honest. Um, but not great farm. Silhouette, of course, at 22 and 7. Actually not that much better, to be honest. Uh, the keg going to come in, as well as the turret there from Engineer. And I'm surprised that they didn't actually try to turn around onto that Engineer. She was heavily out of position and might have been killed. I don't know. Maybe Hammerstorm didn't have enough mana for the stun at that point. 
Because if we click on his mana, yeah, he was probably very close to having mana for that stun, but not quite there. Engineer runs for the top room, but it's not there. He might be in a little bit of trouble if there's uh, any kind of return. Actually, a nice stun coming out from Nefora, as well as the auto attacks. The keg has to be applied, and Engineer is going to have to take a trip to the base. Great job there from Kors, actually getting the out position on the Engineer and great auto attacks. Well, Luna's still trying to actually get something done here with Dark Lady, but Dark Lady hitting level 6 picks up the Ring of the Teacher, and she's going to have enough mana to spam out her spells pretty effectively, even popping a mana potion to keep that mana up at this point. Continually getting farm down there, and so Dark Lady doing a nice job. Currently the lead is in favor of FYKU. A uh, thousand gold lead as well as 2300 uh, experience lead. So that's still just doing her farm thing down here. Finished up Steam Boots already so looking good not as great a farm as you might expect though she's only at 250 gpm as opposed to the dark lady who's holding her own at 220 gpm looking good <laughs> a dark lady versus a silhouette aluna that's maintaining 220 gpm that's fantastic to be honest so a great job coming out of peewee down here in this bottom lane metal lane Raxus trying to hold his own. He's about 20 GPM behind this Hammerstorm. He's doing relatively well. No kills going out yet. Seven minutes into this game. Still no Bloodlust kill. Not for want of trying as this middle lane has tried to gank one another three, four, five times. Who knows? But quite a few, certainly. Bubbles is doing a little bit better up here in the top lane. 182 GPM as opposed to the 214 of the Plague Rider. Plague using a Contagion Nuke there to grab a couple last hits, and that'll propel him even further. He's actually going to make his way over, and he will try to finish something up right now. Actually going to pick up a Mystic Vestments. Oh, middle lane, there's a little bit of trouble as Engineer's going down. The Elemental Void was used there to get the kill onto them. Uh, Silhouette's coming in, trying to apply pressure onto that that uh tempest and he will go down there's a lot of people here in comes the plague who bouncing around is able to actually take out silhouette and out goes nymphora able to get the port out there were a lot of tps the regen was still active on Maraxis, and with a couple of axes the quake is going to be applied as well the emerald lightning will come in and will the power throw connect the power throw does get canceled and that was a lot of people was that the entire team uh that was everyone in the entire team there for duel and they fell even further behind they're going to continually fall further behind because they gave dark lady free farm uh while they tried to get the kills there that was a one for two exchange duel getting the worst end of that bargain now they did kill the tempest and they did kill uh the hammer storm so that's nice and but they lost their silhouette silhouette is now 230 gpm as opposed to the 240 gpm of dark lady the Dark Lady that was short lane soloing against a Luna Silhouette is out farming the Silhouette. Uh, okay. That's a thing, I guess. But uh, it's really unfortunate. FYK looking fantastic right now there. I, I hate to go back and say that I was wrong, but the lane situation which I did give to... Uh, Duel is now greatly in favor of the FYKU team. So it really comes down to FYKU just outplaying their opponents, able to get more last hits. And look at that right there. You stun the creep so that the arcane shield can't be used, and it hits both of the opposing team. Immediately regenerated by the Nymph 4 with that level 2 grace of the Nymph. And wham, bam, you get some last hits and you get some damage done. No big deal. Silhouette and Luna do make their way up into the top lane now. Maraxis is going to team up with Bubbles. The kelp field being activated as well as the Matrax. And down goes Dark Lady. So that's what Duel needed. They needed to get a little bit of roaming done. And roam they did as Dark Lady takes the fall there. Equalizing the gold lead just a tiny bit. But still finding themselves down. 2200 going in for a dive here. The uh, Brute Strength activated. And one mighty swing of that hammer. And Hammerstorm goes down. 
doing 250 some on damage uh, at that point. Oof. With that double damage rune activated to looking good. With that double damage rune having 25 seconds left, it looks like the Legion team's in good shape to push down this middle tower. Group's tank in the way. Elemental replicates out in front. Hammerstorm doing his best, or excuse me, uh, Marax is doing his best to try to clean those up. And a Shell Surf comes in, so a little bit of rotation. And the tower will stand. Let's take a look at Hammerstorm's farm. 36 and 17 GPM, as opposed to his opponent, 35 and 7. So uh, last hits in terms of creep kills, very similar. But Hammerstorm with about twice, almost three times as many denies. And that would explain why Hammerstorm is level 7 and Braxis is level 8. No, I have literally no clue. Braxis 1 0 and 1 as opposed to the uh, 2 0 and 1 there for Hammerstorm. So I guess Hammerstorm didn't die. I thought Hammerstorm died in the middle, but it was actually. Uh, it was actually just the Tempest that died. Hmm. Okay. Sorry about that. Need to grab a little bit of water. Long day of casting means long day of staying hydrated, otherwise my, my throat will go dry and you guys won't be able to hear from me for a week. I'm telling you what, I have not gotten sick since I started casting regularly. I'm not looking forward to getting sick. Uh, Aluna actually going to go in with an Emerald Lightning. Is it Hasted Maraxis is going to team up with the Bubbles? The Charging Strikes right through the Kelp Field, and the Stun's going to go off. The Matrax is activated, and one last Axe is going to be all that it takes. Down goes Maraxis, though, as the return kill comes in from Pinky Curdy with the Glacial Blast and the Plegu Ultimate being used. And down he goes. Aluna gets the TP on out of there, so a one for one. Exchange taken down the Dark Lady in exchange for the Maraxis. Now, a couple of ports did have to be expended for the Legion team in order to secure that kill. So you might say that uh, the Hellborn got the better end of that exchange, but overall, one for one's a one for one. Engineer continues to try to get something done here. Frozen Goat not necessarily having as good of a time as he had in the first game where he was up to 24,000 or like 121,000 gold per minute course did get the bloodlust before the game started and was looking very good at that point able to even buy his teammate a bottle and just keep on farming but this time 70 gpm he's gotten uh, four and seven cs but not even looking like boots are going to be a thing anywhere near now silhouette in the top lane just kind of doing her farm thing while well, dark lady's been targeted in the bottom lane Trying to get the last hits off of the tower, but not quite able to. Sitting at uh, 279 GPM as opposed to the 313 of the Hammerstorm, who is the top farmer in the game. Looking strong there in the middle lane. Almost 100 GPM, now very close to 100 GPM. Higher than his uh, Maraxis counterpart. Dark Lady may be in some trouble again. Shell Surf Song of the Sea combo. In comes the Kelp Field. Going to try to Charging Strikes away. The stun is active. The stomp misses, though, is a nice... Uh, Zeal Stun is actually able to hit two players in that bot. Dark Lady his life back. Engineer trying to make sure that he does not die to this Hammerstorm who has a regeneration rune activated. So going to trade some stuns right there. Both players do take one. But Hammerstorm happy with that exchange with the uh, regen rune. That's of no consequence to him. Although Nymphora is TPing in now. Cancelled immediately though. Wants to make sure that she is not going to be TPing into a trap. Pinky Curdy, haven't talked too much about him. He's been involved in two kills with two assists. So, able to get a little bit done there. Picks up his mana ring as well as his portal key now. 15 minutes into the game. To complement those red boots, he's going to be an active ganking, pushing machine. Not bad, not bad. Picks up a TP and a little bit of regen, so he might be making his way back out into the world momentarily. Top lane, Plague Rider trying to do something against the Silhouette, and he's maintaining uh, relatively even levels up here. 185 GPM, so not terrible. Certainly not the 400 GPM Plague Rider that we did see in the last game. But not bad. 
Actually, a stun going out onto Miraxis. He's going to take about half of his life in damage. A great job here from Shizor. Actually targeting creeps that are next to Miraxis to get the last hits rather than targeting Miraxis himself. Knowing that that slow moving projectile can be easily dodged with the W. The Arcane Shield from Miraxis gaining a little bit of movement speed as well as the attack damage. And essentially nullifying the gank. Bottom lane, they're trying to set up on Dark Lady once again. Bubbles and Miraxis. This is their entire job is just trying to keep this Dark Lady down. But that's why you have a Hammerstorm on your team. He could just be your initiator. But right now, he's farming kind of like he's going to be going semi-carry. And with the portal key that he just picks up, going to be able to set up some very effective ganks on some unsuspecting uh, Hellborn players pretty soon here. Hammerstorm goes in for the last hit and grabs it. Propelling his farm all the way up to 350 GPM. The Legion team now in a 5,000 gold and 5,000 experience lead. Bottom lane, Hammerstorm in some trouble as the Nymphora TPs come in. The Hammerstorm throw already goes out. The Taint Soul not quite applied as the uh, Dark Blades are there. The Arcane Shield activated, though, and a nice job. You're actually going to turn it around, and Hammerstorm is going to take the fall. A fantastic job. Great communication there by Duel, knowing the, that the Miraxis will be able to turn that around with a great stomp, an axe, and the, the explosion of the Matrax. It was enough damage to turn that one around, so fantastic job. Brings down the Hammerstorm and knocks his GPM down a peg or two, about 30 GPM lower to only 325. Dark Lady is uh, trying to get back up there, sitting at uh, about 250 now. Peewee is nowhere near what he was in the last game, but looking better, certainly. Better than he was a couple of minutes ago, that is, after taking two deaths. I'm still impressed by the, the uh, Dark Lady actually out-farming the silhouette there in that bottom lane. Uh, booking, since that uh, first game, hasn't looked super strong. Um, I, I hate to say that, but, you know, in the last game, he didn't farm nearly as well as I think he could have. And certainly in this game, they did not do a, an effective enough job of making sure that that Dark Lady was forced out of the lane at all times. And Dark Lady now sitting on essentially the same items as Booking. Uh, she's about 20 GPM behind Silhouette, but both players with completed boots and a sustainer now. Dark Lady, of course, going to use hers for that Ruined Cleaver. And Silhouette going to use hers for a uh, <laughs> Null Stone. I wanted to say a Sacrificial Stone. Wouldn't that be funny? Actually, wouldn't be funny because those items aren't even used to make a Sack Stone anymore. I miss the old Sack Stone, though. Let's take a moment to talk about that. No. Let's take a moment to talk about Booking dying up there. I saw that happening on the mini-map, and I was about to take a drink of water and missed that one. So, sorry about that, guys. Hammerstorm, Nymphora, and Plague Rider teaming up to grab that kill. Plague Gary ultimate not even necessary from Plague. Engineer finally picks up boots, so yay, Engineer. I've been in that role myself, playing support, not able to get boots until very late into the game. Now going on 20 minutes. Rax is intimidating the Dark Lady down here. Knowing that wherever Miraxis is, it's very likely that Bubbles is very close to fall. That's an illusion, Bubbles Top. That's not real. You have to be careful. Now, Dark Lady steps up to the creep wave now, and she's going to be able to get her last hits. Yeah, going from a solo 1v2 Dark Lady into what, by, uh, I would assume, is going to be about a 22 minute Dark, or, uh, excuse me, 22 minute Battle Fury. It's not bad. That is not too bad. Now, the unfortunate part is that the Dark Lady team is not able to stack up the jungle like we saw from that first game. Hammerstorm blinks in with the, the hammer toss. The Glacial Blast are there as well. The Shadow is going to split them up, but Silhouette will die anyway. Hammerstorm takes a lot of return damage and will have to back up now as Engineer did a good job of trying to push back the Legion team, but not quite enough to save Booking, who is now 0-3-1. and one. Uh, Farm all the way down to 260 GPM and Dark Lady is back in the lead in terms of carry farming. So, Duel looking like uh, they just really don't have a response at this point. They relied on their strong lanes, which I 
I said I thought they had great lanes. Actually, Nymphora going to be in some trouble here. Is a nice take cover. Uh, Nymphora actually breaks the link and will die to neutrals. So great job uh, with that. Great job from everybody right there, to be honest. Uh, Hammerstorm comes in, gets a stun onto both players, but the take cover from Bubbles is actually able to save him. Nymphora utilizes that time to let the silence wear off and immediately gets a double stun with the zeal. And then, instead of trying to run away, dies to neutral. So she still loses gold, but of course, denying that experiencing gold to her enemies was the correct decision. The Maraxis would have been able to run her down with just red boots on Nymphora. So a great job there. But yeah, the strong lanes that Duel was running with, they just weren't able to make them work. There was some poor execution there in the bottom lane. and the, the top lane, uh, Plague Rider was doing very well as opposed to the short lane solo. They should have been able to do a little bit better, but unfortunately they weren't able to. And they weren't able to win their lanes. That in conjunction with the opposing team having a jungle and you don't, and you find yourself in a 6,500 gold deficit and an 8,000 gold deficit here at 21 minutes into the game. Maraxis is uh, starting to save up money, so he's about 50 gold away from that portal key. After he finishes that ballista, he should be able to pick that one up. And with those steam boots, mystic vestments, bottle, and power supply, he's got enough mana to keep himself going for quite some time. Hammerstorm has had his... Uh, portal key for quite some time as well as he goes to bottle up a double damage It'd Be interesting to see what he goes for next whether he chooses to go with something like a shrunken head Maybe a soul's bulwark maybe even uh, an abyssal skull or I mean, Who knows maybe even some more aggressive items like uh, a rift shards or an insanitarius I've seen all kinds of crazy things on carry hammer storms before but most of the time You're gonna need that shrunken head and you're certainly gonna need that soul's bulwark So I would expect one of those two to be coming out next for our blue player, Shizor. Black Rider continually just doing his thing up here. He's done a great job of counter TPing to try to get counter ganks going on whenever his team is in trouble. But other than that, just keeping his lane pushed up and denying farm in the top lane. Elborn team looking like they want to make something happen here. If Dark Lady reveals herself, yep, yeah, then she goes the Maraxis, the Quake, as well as the Matrix being activated with that Shell Surf. Oh, the. Uh, Plague Carrier Ultimate is actually bouncing around there. A nice cup filling under three people, but Bubbles is going to be in some trouble as he goes down. The Plague Carrier bouncing to Maraxis as well. The W is activated and the Portal Key as well. Uh, maybe a little bit of delayed reactions there, there from Shizor. I know that they're playing on uh, US East and they are European. Yeah. So he, he's got some ping, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and check that as Nymphora is actually teleporting up to this top lane. They're going to look to grab the silhouette. And Hammerstorm teleport. That's unfortunate. Hammerstorm's actually going to try to get up there and cut her off, but not quite able to. Uh, but he portal keyed down when she tree grappled up, and they're caught on uh, two sides of the same fence. They're not quite looking for each other like Sleepless in Seattle, but they are trapped on the other side. That's for sure. So back to the ping. Shizor is at 188 MS, so not unbearable by any means, but certainly higher than they might be comfortable with. They're going to have to get used to it, though, playing on US East, which is the primary server for a lot of teams in the Diamond Division, which is where both of these teams will be going after today. Well, after this cycle, which ends on Sunday. Speaking of that, the cycle ends on Sunday, guys. Uh, I think the gold cycle even ends on Saturday. But isn't that something? That's going to be uh, very nice. The grand finals for the gold division will be cast on Honcast there on uh, Saturday. I'll be casting some diamond matches that day, I do believe. Silver division will be cleaning up on Saturday as well. And then I believe bronze and diamond clean up on Sunday. So make sure to tune in for uh, to Honcast as well right here twitch.tv slash complexity Han for all of your Han tour coverage this weekend. I think I'll be probably casting. Uh, I won't be casting any of the finals because Honcast will be covering those. I might cast like the bronze EU finals. I know those aren't scheduled to be casted for Honcast. And I'm sure those guys would love some coverage. And is in some trouble. In comes the Portal Key Quake, the Matrax, as well as the Shell Surf. And down goes Nymphora. Silhouette's trying to get some Ancient Stack going here, but not quite able to do it without taking a ton of damage. The Null Stun has been completed on here, as well as the uh, Battle Fury. The Rune Cleaver will be finished up. 
Just picks up the second broadsword. And so that'll be flying out now. Dark Lady might be in some trouble once again. The Ward of Revelation is down here. So trying to scout out, make sure there's nobody in Viz. But yeah, back to this weekend. Uh, tomorrow I will be covering the Losers Bracket Finals for Gold. That's Friday. And then as well on Saturday, I believe that I will be covering uh, some of the Diamond matches. And then probably something else. I think I'll... I think I'll be covering two diamond matches on Saturday and then a gold final, or excuse me, a bronze finals EU on Sunday. And then, of course, Oncast will be covering the diamond finals. So make sure to tune in for all of that this weekend, guys. Of course, great Hon Tour matches coming up every day of the week now that Hon Tour is finally upon us. In this game, though, FYKU looking good. They need to finish this one out if they want to make it to the grand finals for gold and fight someone coming up from that loser's bracket for that $1,000 first place prize. And of course, the experience or the uh, points that are so important toward that grand finals. It's going to be out in April at an undisclosed location. I'm looking forward to that. I hope to be there in person. That'd be kind of fun. Meet up with everybody. I met a lot of the guys at NASL Season 2, but overall haven't met a whole ton of people from the Han scene. Rex is already putting that portal key to use multiple times. Now sitting on another 1,400 gold, so we'll see if he does choose to go for a uh, Hellflower, like we see a lot of players go for. Hammerstorm still sitting on a lot of gold, 3,700 gold at this point. He very well might be saving up for a shrunken head. 3,900 gold. Would be able to right-click that. A nice take cover there from Bubbles. Might have been able to save him. Nymphora tries to TP in, but immediately cancels that after saying that the gank was unsuccessful. And that there were counter TPs coming in by way of literally the entire Hellborn team. Silhouette's still chilling up there, actually. As Plague Rider is doing his thing. Like I feel like you could uh, go up to the replay of this game, click any part of that time bar, and then check the top lane in exactly this location, and Plague Rider would be there for the first 27 minutes of this game. <laughs> pretty interesting, pretty interesting, but he's doing a great job of keeping that lane pushed back. If Silhouette's having to push all the way out here to farm, then she can be vulnerable from Nymphora teleports in in either of these locations, and of course with uh, someone coming up into the river. So that's why you have that Plague Rider. Gets you lane control. You're able to get someone with decent farm on the suicide position. Buy those mid-game items. Your Astrolabes. Your Storm Spirits. Something like that. And do a very good job. So, Shrunken Head being picked up on two players within three seconds of one another. FYKU brings home one on Hammerstorm as well as one on Tempest. So getting into team fights is going to be trouble. I love that board game, by the way. Just thought you should all all should know. If you want to get me anything for Christmas, buy me the board game Trouble, because I haven't had that one since I was a kid. <laughs> um, but yeah, Shrunken Heads on both those heroes. You're going to see some big elemental voids coming out from Tempest and Hammerstorm standing inside of them, not able to be stunned by the other team. He's going to be putting out immense amounts of damage, now level 13, with uh, a few points in the Mighty Swing, three to be exact. It's going to be quite useful. Bubbles is in some trouble. In comes Hammerstorm as well as the Glacial Blasts from Tempest. And down goes Bip on that Bubbles. 2, 2, and 3 now at 191 GPM. So dunked him below 200 as a result of that death. The Hellborn team finds themselves down a player. So instead they're going to go for the counter push onto this mid tower, which they should very easily be able to deal with. Actually it looks like a couple of TP is going to come in, so not going to be very easy after all oh Aluna even going to get caught out of position here as Hammerstorm is going to come in the tree grapple does follow but one more auto attack and down goes Aluna Pinky Curdy gets the credit for that kill a uh, tree grapple attempt to prevent that one to come out did succeed with the Hammerstorm not getting the last hit but Tempest was in position to make it happen all the same 
Hammerstorm activates that brute strength and tries to get in onto the Miraxis. And will he be able to? The Shrunken Head still not being activated. Now they get the stun off. The Matrax is up, but it's not going to be able to provide enough for the time being. The Shrunken Head activated now, as well as the Plague and a huge Elemental Void going off right there. Silhouette in some trouble as well. In comes the Kelp Field, but Silhouette will go down. Bubbles is still over here off the right side, but Hammerstorm finds him. No take cover this time, Bubbles, and he's going to be in some trouble. The Cell Surf and the Song of the Sea. The Song of the Sea goes off as well as the Emerald Lightning. But the, the Shell Surf being held for now is Hammerstorm actually going to back off. Dark Lady is in position. If they actually get the stun and the Dark Blades onto the bubbles, they could take them down. But choosing not to, they don't know what's lying up that hill. I can tell them right now, it's not something you should be afraid of. Another great team fight there for FYKU. Up to 15,000 gold advantage as well as 18,000 experience. They are looking very, very good right now. Looking in shape to finish this game off. Pinky Curdy gets credit for that kill. Up to 2,600 gold in the bank. So we'll see what he chooses to go for. Maybe something like a refresher orb or maybe even post haste. As uh, he does have striders. Additional 1,900 gold to upgrade those striders into post haste now. That was uh, buffed and changed around a little bit. We'll see if he chooses to grab those. Would have to or would be able to get rid of all those pesky homecoming stones, saving himself gold in the long run. Food for thought. You get 15 homecoming stones. It's the same price as upgrading your striders into post haste these days. Something along those lines, maybe even 14. I haven't done the math. I'm not Moon Meander. Don't ask me to do the math. I won't. Won't. I haven't taken a math class in like five years. And damn, it feels good. But, uh, yeah, of course, post taste very, very nice. And, of course, affording you the additional map control by being able to teleport all over the place. Dark Lady might be in a little bit of trouble as they're doing some counter warding here. This ward of sight is in vision. And Bubbles, oh, he could have ported to that one and maybe grabbed Dark Lady with a kelp field, but not quite going to. Seems like every time Nymphora uses her ultimate, uh, she has to cancel it because she doesn't know where she's porting into and feels like she's going to die. Pretty much every time I can only remember like once in this game where Nymphora actually committed to an ultimate. But whatever. Aluna is invisible and trying to spot out the enemy team, but oh, they turn it around and Aluna just disintegrates right there. A bound eye on Nymphora and the Hellborn team's going to say, oh, well. <sighs> I guess they have a bound eye. Shrunken head picked up on Dark Lady. Three fifths of the team now. Going to be invulnerable to magic for the majority of those team fights. And looking worse and worse. A 20,000 experience lead here for the uh, Legion team. And FYKU, they, they just don't have a response. They're going kind of all in with the shield breaker on Silhouette. Knowing that she can't afford to get something that's not going to allow her to do massive amounts of damage in those team fights. But even with that shield breaker, her damage is only 158. She's not hitting hard. And the Relentless Salvo stacks, that, that's great. The Minus Armor is a result of that Shrunken Head. That's great. But she's still just not hitting hard. And they don't have enough lockdown to actually keep everybody dead or locked down while they have those Shrunken Heads on to take a team fight. As a result, I think they're going to have to give up every one of their Outer Towers here. And Bubbles is in some trouble now. Dark Lady doesn't even need no help. He says, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. And takes down Bubbles as Nymphora TPs in for the assist, but not even needed. Tower taken down in the top. And uh, the bottom, actually, Hellborn grabs the kill while Dark Lady was off, securing the kill onto that little turtle. Oh, Luna in some trouble, maybe. Actually, Tempest comes in with a big elemental void once again. The Plague Rider ultimate bouncing around. Going to catch Engineer as well as Miraxis. Miraxis will die to the auto attacks. And it looks like Hammerstorm's going to try to follow up. Will they get the Engineer? No. He's going to get stunned in the base? No. <laughs> that would not have been kind of funny. The uh, Null Stun is procced onto Silhouette, so they might be able to follow up onto her at some point. But getting two more kills, the Aluna and the Miraxis, it's now down to just Silhouette and Engineer to defend this top tower, which is the last outer tower. Actually, they're going to go onto Silhouette right there. Drop the Hammerstorm Stun as well as the Glacial Blast. The Contagion Nuke is going to come in. They're trying to split up their players to actually... Uh, uh, cut off the shadow, but the shadow will be used and she will be able to get out of there. Pinky Curdy taking a lot of return damage as well. The bottom defensive tower inside of the base is actually taking a lot of damage as a result of Dark Lady Nymphora wailing on that one. Nymphora may be in a little bit of trouble as the shell surf's used but not ported to. 
Biff was saying, I don't know about that. And uh, I think that was a pretty good decision. Nymphora still walking around with that bound eye, doing her counter warding thing, and I'd say she's doing a pretty effective job. One ward up on the map, actually another one was just placed over here, that's a counter ward. But doing a pretty good job, not too bad. FYKU, if we actually take a look here. This was the last time that uh, a, they got a kill. 1551, Bubbles got a kill. Uh, that was 11 minutes ago. 11 minutes without a kill for your team? I mean, you got to be demoralized going into that one. Uh, even if you know just how far behind you are, which I, uh, the Hellborn team has to know. They're ridiculously, like, insurmountably far behind. Knowing that you've not gotten a kill for your team in 15 minutes, Dark Lady actually activates her Dark Blades there. And they might try to turn this and uh, kill the Dark Lady. Actually, Tempest is going to activate the Shrunken Head as he will be back on him before ports in and then immediately cancels it, as usual. As is par for the course. It looks like there could be another big fight. The Shrunken Head is not available on Tempest. Going to be up about the same time as the Elemental Void, but Luna's going to die. Uh, two hits and Luna goes down. Maraxis in the middle of things. Going to be partying on that Nymphora. And Nymphora will fall as well. Bubbles gets in it with a nice uh, kelp field. The Plagu bouncing around is going to be spread out. Maraxis is going to fall and Silhouette's in some trouble as well. The Hammerstorm Sun is going to finish her off as well as Bubbles falling again. A hat trick coming out for Shizor. And Engineer trying to TP out, but GG well played are coming out and FYKU by all means should be taking this one as GG well played. Let them know that this was a great game and a great series. Guys, FYKU is your victor in this best of three series. They take it in 2-1 fashion. So a great job, Hammerstorm even finishing a Brutalizer there at the end. But that is it, guys. Here are the stats for that game. They're going to go on to the winner's bracket finals to play for that $1,000 first place prize in Han Tour Cycle 1 Gold. And of course, they're going to be making their way into Diamond Division for Cycle 2. That's going to be starting not this weekend, but the following. So get to know these guys. FYKU looking strong in that series. And I'm looking forward to casting their uh, matchup at some point in this future. All right, guys. This has been Complexity Casting with me, your casting host, Beef. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me. I'm not going to do the AC thing from uh, Dota League where he goes through and reads off each and every one of your names. That's like three hours. Uh, but know that I love each and every one of you for being here and joining me for these awesome games today. And of course, I, I really do have to say thank you because without you guys, I would not be able to be here doing what I do. Being able to take time out of my schedule. I do try to support myself through the ad revenue on these. So if you want, stick around. I'm going to play a couple of commercials at the end of this. And of course, help us out by checking out the VODs over at YouTube. That's in the info section below. Click on the pictures that do say tourney scrims and, uh, excuse me, tourney VODs and scrim VODs. Those are individually loaded up for you on my YouTube and Peter's YouTube. The uh, tourney VODs, those are all up in no spoiler playlists on my YouTube, all individually labeled and everything. So make sure to check those out. And of course, subscribe to that YouTube. That's youtube.com slash one for all of your Tour games cast. While you're over there, make sure to check out youtube.com slash Peter Pandem for those uh, scrim VODs. Guys, have to thank Complexity for allowing me to put this on as well. Check them out over at complexitygaming.com, facebook.com slash complexitygaming, and Twitter at Complexity Live. And while you're at Twitter, check me out at BeefPotPy1, tweeting about anything Complexity Han related. Whenever we go live here at twitch.tv slash complexity Han, you'll know there first on Twitter. Make sure to follow here at twitch.tv slash complexity haunt to get those notifications we'll of course be back live with the loser bracket finals of gold tomorrow morning and maybe some scrims we'll have to see but also big shout out to complexity sponsors that is origin p and y sound blaster creative and oh geez uh oh i set them out of order and now i forgot one uh oh okay hold on i know what i'm gonna do switch to that scene and Q-Pad. <laughs> wow, that was embarrassing. But big shout-outs to those guys who are helping to make complexity and complexity scrims and casts possible. I appreciate that. And, guys, that is it. 
I'm out for now. Huge shout outs to S2 for making Han Tour happen. We'll be back tomorrow, though, with more complexity casting coverage. Hope to see you guys all there. I'm out. We'll catch you next time.